All right, guys, so I'm going to do my best to go through these notes uh, quickly here. Um, today, we are going to talk about the critics of the New Deal. Uh, so to do a quick recap, uh, the past few days we've been looking at uh, this Great Depression and then subsequently uh, the New Deal, which was um, this series of programs by FDR uh, to try to fix the Depression. Uh, things like putting Americans back to work with um, things like the Public Works Administration or providing money to the retired uh, and disabled with Social Security, to even things like reforming the banking system uh, with the FDIC or Federal Dep Deposit Insurance Company. And so today we're going to look at who are the people who did not like the New Deal, um, that didn't think that it achieved what it was supposed to achieve. So first we're going to start by talking about some outspoken liberal critics. So what we mean by this is they actually liked the idea of the New Deal, but they said it did not do enough. So we have this guy, Father Charles Coughlin, Charles Coughlin. So father, he is a priest. He's a Catholic priest. Um, and he's going to achieve national popularity through radio broadcasts, just like FDR does. Uh, keep in mind the FDR or that the radio was a really big deal um, at this time. Um, he's going to basically kind of come up with this conspiracy where he's essentially saying that wealthy Jewish people, foreign communists, and bankers and businessmen that they're all working with FDR, that they're in in cahoots with FDR, and that they are out to get the little man. They're out to get the lower class, and basically saying that uh, this New Deal. Um, was really just tricking people into thinking um, that they were being helped by the government, but really that the government was taking advantage of them. Didn't really have anything to back it up. He's kind of just a talking head uh, and somebody who uh, is just trying to sort of gain fame. Uh, this guy, Dr. Francis Townsend, he's going to take a little bit of a different tack here, and he's going to come up with his own plan to fix the Great Depression. He calls this aptly named after himself, the Townsend Plan. And essentially he, so this is actually prior to social security being passed. Um, keep in mind the New Deal is gonna span multiple years. It's not all at once. And so actually this Townsend Plan is gonna be so popular that um, FDR is gonna basically borrow from it and they're gonna create um, social security from this idea. But basically, the idea is create a pension system. Pension means retirement system uh, for people who are above 60 years old. The idea is you retire, the government gives you $200 a month. And guys, in today's money, that's about $3,000 a month um, that we would be receiving. And so, again, um, he does not end up uh, you know, becoming president or anything like that. But FDR is going to be like, you know what? People think this is a really good idea. And so we're going to borrow from this. We're going to create Social Security, which does a very similar thing, except the age is 65. And the number that you receive uh, depends on basically what you put into Social Security throughout your life. Um, whether you guys know this or not, those of you who work, uh, out of your paycheck, there's actually a tax that gets taken out called Social Security tax. And that is literally the government taking money from you and storing it for you so that when you retire, you will hopefully get that money back. Uh, and uh, another thing about his plan is he's basically forcing people to retire at 60. And the idea here is too, hey, if we get people, to, the older people to stop working, then that's going to open up more jobs for younger people. And it's going to create more monetary flow or money flow throughout the economy. There he is. Uh, or sorry, that's actually Charles Coughlin. So that's the um, priest. And then uh, there he is again, giving a speech. And this is what uh, Mr. Townsend looks like. And sorry, it's blocked by my uh, video here. Okay, uh, so our next one, another liberal crit critic, his name is Huey Long. So he's probably the most famous, he's a Senator. And uh, he is very, very liberal. Meaning again, when we see this term liberal, they believe that the government should be doing more. And uh, he calls himself the Kingfish. Um, and so he's going to propose this program called the Share Our Wealth Program. If you've ever seen uh, Robin Hood, it's kind of a similar idea uh, to what Robin Hood does. Take from the rich, give to the poor. And so basically this is going to do several things. One, it's going to create very high tax on inheritances over $5 million. So 
if you're a rich person um, and you're like born into wealth, into a wealthy family, and your family passes away, you inherit that money, well, you can only inherit a certain amount of that money. The government's going to take the rest. Um, here's a really interesting thing. Huey Long actually argued 100% tax on incomes over $1 million. So in other words, you could not be a billionaire in his society. Uh, you could be a millionaire, and that's it. Every extra penny that you make uh, gets taxed at 100% rate taken by the government. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and high taxes for other wealthy Americans blow this amount. Uh, the whole idea here is that all this money is going to be redistributed or given back out to the American people evenly in the form of a yearly income of around $2,000 back then, or in today's money, about $42,000. So kind of interesting concept. And the idea is that, hey, all Americans, you could earn this income but you could still work and then get income on top of it. So in other words, we wouldn't really have a society where there are, quote, poor people. Everybody would have access to a fairly good amount of money. For reference, uh, the American, um, the like, was it the American poverty line, I want to say, um, for a family of four is around $25,000 in today's money. So this would be a significant increase over that, just for a single individual too. Uh, so interesting concept. Again, these people are saying the New Deal did not do enough. All right. Uh, and here we have a criticism of this here, though. Here's Huey Long inviting all these people. Hey, come on, everybody can be a king. Uh, we're going to get you your money. And then they walk into his little utopia, but of course they fall into economic chaos. The argument being um, that, hey, we, we need the rich people in society. We have a capitalist society. They deserve their money. We shouldn't be taking and punishing them for being rich. All right, so conservative opposition to the New Deal. Uh, so these would be people who criticize the New Deal for being uh, too socialist or too communist, that it's expanding the government's power too much. Um, and so uh, these people would argue several things. Number one, they would argue against what's called Keynesian economic theory, what's also known as deficit spending. Let me go to the next slide to show you this really quickly. So deficit spending is essentially the idea that our government takes on a certain amount of revenue, right? That we take on a certain amount of tax dollars from people. But when we have all these additional programs uh, like Social Security or these administrations like the Work Progress Administration to put people to work, the government is actually spending more money than it has. So we can see here expenses are higher than revenue. And so that is what you call deficit. Um, and so deficit, each year that you have deficit, that gets added to the national debt, right? And so our government really since the New Deal has been doing this. And so uh, I could show you something else right now uh, if we were in class, but you guys can look it up on your own, the national debt clock. And uh, basically, our national debt is in the trillions now, uh, many trillions of dollars. It's probably, last I checked, 22 trillion, somewhere around there. Um, and that's because each year our government spends more money than it has. So conservatives would argue that this Keynesian theory uh, that the New Deal uses increases the national debt and it's not necessarily proven to work. Uh, also, conservatives would argue that there's too many reg uh, increased regulations, right? That there's all these new things that the um, New Deal does that regulates businesses and tells businesses what they can and can't do, and that that is anti-capitalistic. That's anti-laissez-faire, right? Laissez-faire means leave alone, where the government leaves the people alone to do what they want. Well, Conservatives would argue, hey, we need more of that laissez-faire. That's what makes America work. Uh, and also, the New Deal takes a really pro-union stance. And as we've learned in our class before, uh, unions are often criticized as having communist or socialist tendencies because they support the laborers and not the business people. There's also an organization, this conservative organization called the American Liberty League, Liberty League. And its purpose is literally to stop the New Deal from being able to continue. Uh, they do everything in their power to fight the New Deal, stop the expansion of government. They see the expansion of government as a threat to our individual liberty. 
Um, and they would criticize FDR, here's a good vocab term for you, as a demagogue, is how you say that. Sounds like a really evil term. I guess in some ways you could say it is. A demagogue is just someone who only wants to appeal to popular desires rather than actual stances. Um, so FDR is criticized as being a demagogue, uh, basically saying, hey, this new deal sounds really good, um, but in actuality, it's not helping people, it's not helping society. Um, and a lot of politicians are accused of being demagogues, right? They're just saying stuff to sound good. All right, so we can see here new, um, criticism of FDR. He's pulling his magical rabbit out of a hat, that rabbit being spending. And of course, he's not actually a magician. Uh, so this cartoonist is questioning, will this new deal actually help um, us in this Great Depression? Uh, you'll also see a lot of criticisms of FDR where he's holding like glasses or medicines that are these different uh, New Deal programs, right? Hmm, will this New Deal program make our soup taste better? Will this New Deal program make our soup taste better? In other words, will this stuff help us make uh, the economy better? Um, and you can see here he's saying, Frank or FDR, are you sure that it won't explode? Is this actually going to help? Okay, uh, one other thing I want to mention here is the conservative Supreme Court. So uh, during FDR's uh, tenure, uh, multiple of his acts, uh, including the NRA and AAA, the Agricultural Adjustment Act, are declared unconstitutional because the Supreme Court is full of conservative justices. So FDR, he is going to um, author a bill called the Court Packing Bill of 1937. And essentially, the idea here is to propose that the president could appoint new justices to the Supreme Court uh, for any justice who is older than 70. It's a whole lot of information just to say, basically, it's going to allow him to put more liberal justices on the Supreme Court. And essentially, this would allow him to be able to pass more laws without question. And while that sounds good, if you're a liberal and somebody who wants uh, to be able to pass whatever laws um, that you see fit, um, of course, this is going to be a criticism because you could say, hey, FDR, you're pretty power hungry. You want to pass any law you want without anybody questioning you. Um, and so this would be people saying he's like a dictator, that he wants too much power. And the last thing that I'll say uh, that I don't have in these uh, slides here is that really the New Deal, um, while you could argue does have some great successes with helping uh, make the de depression better, um, Truly, we don't come out of the Great Depression until World War II, which brings jobs back to the nation and brings our economy back to full force. So that would be the last argument against the New Deal. All right, guys, thanks for listening, and I will see you on Wednesday.